All right, the other thing is like you have to meet your students where they are. Uh, you know, sometimes you may have an idea of how you want to teach the class or what techniques you want to teach and stuff like that. The main thing is really kind of meeting your students where they are and not really forcing them to do anything because you could lose them. Um, one example of that is like uh, when we're meditating. We don't really start them off sitting up in the easy pose and, you know, meditating like that. We just honestly just let them lay down and be still and just focus on the breath. Uh, but then, you know, we progressively move them into more advanced exercises, but, you know, we're very careful at not jumping them into things too fast, you know, building up their workouts so they can handle the stuff and feel the benefits so they will kind of adapt these things into their lives. Uh, make it practical um, is a huge thing that we're all about. And uh, I mean, if kids only recognize, like only associate their mindfulness practice with being around you or sitting on a mat or sitting in a chair or being still, like it's kind of defeating the purpose. Because I mean, I know we only have our students for um, what, three hours a day, a few days a week. Mm -hmm. And there's all that other time during the day, there's the weekends and they're in some really kind of crazy situations in their lives. So we're all about teaching them to incorporate these practices into their lives and not just, I'm gonna meditate and that's the end of it. But really, really like embody the mindfulness practice, embody compassion, embody love, embody the being present. And I mean, it's working. I mean, cause the kids take the practice outside and incorporate it into their lives. There's this one kid that we work with um, who, uh, I mean, he's an awesome kid. I mean, in any other, in any other if he would have grown up in another family, this kid would probably be on the road to being like the CEO of a Fortune 500 company or the president. Like this kid is just has a magnetic personality. He's a natural leader. Um, he's smart. He's a sharp kid, and he just has it. Like he's one of those kids. Like when no matter what room he walks in, he takes over the room. He just has that type of personality and that type of energy. But um, because of certain things that happen, that's it's not really a realistic route for him. I know uh, maybe a few summers ago his. Um, his brother got shot maybe, what, like 14 times, 15 times, something crazy. Like, there was a rumor going around his brother was dead, and, and he, his solution to it was that he was going to start a gang with his friends to kind of protect all of his friends. And they were going to do what they had to do to kind of stay safe. And, and yeah, I mean, so, so that he didn't have to worry about it. He didn't want to lose any of his close friends, so they started a gang, and a lot of the neighbors didn't like it. And he was the lead. I mean, he was, the nat he was just a natural leader, so he was their leader. And it turned into one of those things that, like, uh, when he saw, like a lot of people, when they saw them as a group coming up the street, like, they would cross the other side or go another way because they just some intimidating-looking kids. But, I mean, it's just they – he has he has his mindful base that he always goes back to. Like, if things are getting too wild, we can pull him in and talk to him. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, we can – we have a certain – he has a certain respect for us that, that he doesn't have for a lot of other adults – just because of things we try to do for him and his family and, and things along those lines. I mean, and a lot of people look at him and, it, and it's really weird. I know at one point we were, uh, he was he was gonna go with us on that training retreat to uh, North Carolina last summer. And uh, I know I was stopped at a stop sign, had someone in the car with one of our volunteers with me and he comes over and he knocks on the window and she's looking at me like, are you, you really want me to roll my window down? Like, I'm not doing it. I was like, no, roll the window down. He, he leans in, mouth full of gold teeth and he's like, Yo, don't forget about me about the training retreat. I'm still trying to go with it. I'm trying to get back on my yoga. So like, all right, and she's looking, and she is totally, she's totally confused by this because I mean, this kid doesn't look like someone that would be talking about mindfulness and yoga and a training retreat and wanting to teach people and help people. But that's just the base that he has, and, and helping him kind of incorporate those skills into his life is definitely, I don't, you can see it in him. Like he, he's in a lot of rough situations, but you can see that base in him, and you can see him kind of. There's a lot of situations in our neighborhood that could have gone a lot different if there was some, if he didn't have that base, there were a lot of situations in our neighborhood that could have been a lot more violent and could have escalated a lot more, but he has that base and can kind of, I mean, they're not going to question him just because of his personality, his leadership, and, and all those other things. So it's just, it, it's good that he has that base and he can incorporate it into every aspect of his life.